A hundred metres below the surface, technicians are putting the final touches on an upgrade to the world's most advanced physics experiment. The Large Hadron Collider sends tiny particles through pipes at speeds just shy of the speed of light at almost 300,000 kilometres a second. But an initial design flaw stopped the machine from running at full power. In 2008 we had an incident on a magnet and uh, we decided that it was necessary to consolidate the interconnection of these superconducting uh, cables between two magnets in order to, to run safely at 7 TV. So during the first three years, we run only at half energy, 4 TV, which was nevertheless uh, sufficient to find the X boson, for, for instance, or, and many other things. But physicists want to, to go higher and uh, have more energetic uh, particle and energetic collision. So that's why we consolidate each interconnection. And this was a really big job. To do this, the experiment was switched off, and then each section was rebuilt and meticulously tested. Well, much of the focus of this upgrade has been on strengthening 1,700 of these copper linking cables. They're important because they connect the huge electromagnets inside these pipes. The electromagnets are very important to the experiment because they direct the beam of particles as it travels along this 27 kilometer long loop. At full speed, particles travel around that loop 11,000 times a second. Then they're put on a collision course with a second beam travelling around the pipe in the opposite direction. The high energy collisions that result are then analysed to see what they reveal about how particles inside the atom behave. If we want to observe something, we uh, use our eyes or we use maybe a camera and that is a particle detector in itself. It detects photons, which is a type of particle. And that's how we reconstruct the world around us. We want to do exactly the same thing with Atlas, but not just photons. We want to also reconstruct electrons, muons, taus, all these other types of fundamental particles. The trouble is that the proton particles are so small that even though the beams are focused down to a quarter of the width of a human hair, just 20 out of 200 billion of the particles actually collide. This means an experiment like this one needs to run for months, even years, to gather enough data for analysis. You want to see what particles were a little bit closer to the Big Bang, what particles existed. We need to hit things together harder. So next year we're going to go up to 14 TV. So you can see that's almost double what we were at last year. And going up to 14 TV means we can look for whole new particles. Maybe there's dark matter particles out there uh, which are just a bit too heavy so that we can't make them only at the energy we've been at so far. We need to hit things together harder in order to explore those bigger mass or larger energy regimes. But creating these collisions would be of little use without the ability to store and analyse the vast amount of data. The volume of data generated by these experiments is enormous. Tens of millions of sensors sending hundreds of millions of pieces of data every day. Just storing this information as these servers do, let alone analysing it, takes an incredible amount of computing power. Alberto Pace is in charge of that network. One of the most important components is the network because we also have to distribute all this data to 11, 12 data centers in the world. Then we'll also redistribute them to several hundreds uh, high energy physics laboratories, universities, physics departments that are doing research in uh, high energy physics. The development of CERN's scientific computer network also spawned what is now the World Wide Web, which opened the internet up for billions of people around the world. We have immediately seen as the internet has been one of the main tools to allow uh, w uh, international scientific collaboration across all the borders. So we have been really at the earth of and the inventors of the World Wide Web as it is known today. And uh, today we are really heavily involved in uh, sharing the scientific data and sharing computing resources. Discoveries from the experiment have already given us a better understanding of our physical world. The knowledge is also being used in medicine to develop new treatments for cancer 
and other applications are expected in the years ahead. With an increase in power, the researchers say those possibilities become even greater. Tarek Basley, Al Jazeera, Geneva.